Hello everyone and welcome again to Pass Forward. My name's Kira Rushton and I'm currently in my last year of education, year 13 in England, and hoping to study history and politics at university next year. I'm personally really interested in learning and understanding how we interpret and discover history and, given my interest in politics, how history is used and manipulated in the modern day in order to propone certain political narratives or ideals. Therefore, I want to talk to you today about the future of historical education from a student's perspective on the issue. For a subject so focused on the empirical, it's fascinating to consider how uncertain the future of history as an academic discipline really is. The practice of historical education itself has come under question in recent years, especially recently with the development of the Black Lives Matter movement and the resulting resurgence of post-colonial criticisms of typical historical narratives. With pushes to reform the education system coming stronger and stronger, we are presented with the question, what is the future of historical education? So I believe this is a question we can primarily address in three main ways. In terms of where in the world we focus our learning, when we focus our learning, and how we approach both of these in terms of the realm of history we look into. A comprehensive historical education will hopefully seek to strike a balance between all three, covering history worldwide, across a vast period of time and analysing it through lenses including social, cultural and economic. It can certainly be argued that a country's educational system will naturally focus on the country's own history, as this can shape an understanding of it itself and its norms as well as the political environment in which it finds itself. For example, in my British education I've learned about the world wars and especially World War II in some way in every school year I can remember. And one can argue that this is important as it was a poignant moment in British history. But this is an idea itself raises many questions. Firstly, should an understanding of a country's history be restricted to the good bits? So for example, World War II is seen as success for the British, whereas we learn much less about British colonialism, or more specifically, events such as the Boer Wars. Surely a cultural and political understanding requires a more holistic view than this. And secondly, in a world that's increasingly globalised, is focusing on one country, on one's own country, actually justified? Should we be seeking instead to give the next generation a worldwide history that will allow them to approach this new world? I believe this is really what history should cover, and I would like to tackle this former question first. So the way that I interpret it, a history that only covers the good bits isn't really a history that can ever be objective. If I am only to look at the ways in which my country, my ideology, my favourite historical figure succeeded, then am I really fully understanding it or them? I believe this is the clearest way in which history and historical education is used to promote certain narratives. We only learn the good bits for the people or the places we're meant to like, and the bad for those that we aren't. There's no real sense of objectivity involved in the field of history when it's used in this way, furthering certain narratives, rather than necessarily giving us the informed view of how the world around us came to be, which should arguably be the purpose of education itself. But can history ever truly be objective? I'm of the opinion that it cannot. History in the past are not necessarily always the same. And history is a narrative that we have formed through the years shaping the past and entangling it with our own preconceptions and ideologies in order to make it fit our agenda or to make sense of it for our time. The past is something that is unchanging. These events have happened and are uncompromisingly true, even if we are unaware of them. Yet the past itself is shrouded by history, which is constructed in a certain way in order to provoke a certain reaction in the modern population. The vast differences in historical narratives presented of certain events in different countries, for example, asserts this as a fact. We use these same events with different interpretations to further different agendas. This is inherently interlinked with the idea of only teaching positive sections of one's history in syllabuses in schools or banning the material critical of certain histories in schools. If we are not preparing the younger generation to approach the past holistically through a wide historical education and to critically assess these events, then we are doomed to continue this cycle of historical narratives functioning primarily as a device of power, asserting that of historically dominant demographics and their hold on the past. Furthermore, I would go as far to argue that everyone has a different history. That this can never truly be objective, it's something that forms our worldview and how we come to understand what we encounter. Thus, we should strive to ensure that historical education becomes less a matter of pushing historical narratives and a certain concept of history on people, 
but teaching them the past in a comprehensive manner and allowing them to thus draw their own conclusions, forming their, forming the, their own history with an open mind and informed by fact. A distinction can also be made here between the past and what we understand as history, which I would just like to talk about a little bit here, as I mentioned before. The two are not necessarily congruent due to the existence and perpetuation of these historical narratives, which influence our understanding of the past. I would make the separation that this sense of understanding is what makes up the history, which in itself has the inherent tendency to be influenced by bias, and that therefore the past is, in itself, the empirical and unchanging element of this. History becomes a lens through which we understand this past, and our understanding of this past influences our interpretations of the present and the future linking it to the political narratives. Therefore, I believe it's eminently important that historical education tackles more than just the good bits of our country. It can certainly include these, but a balance must be struck between this and allowing students a full appreciation of history, especially that of their own country, which must inevitably include parts that are seen as more negative. Of course, this is in itself objective. But in British history, for example, we could avoid this one-dimensional understanding of figures and events often depicted to show the country being great by ensuring that we do appreciate both sides of the debate. To give one fairly no well-known example, if we are to look at Winston Churchill, we can not only understand him as a war, war hero if we wish to truly understand him holistically, instead perhaps we could look at his role in the Bengali famine as one thing and this must also be appreciated in order to give us a full understanding of this figure and his history. I do think that this is something that consecutive governments have been reluctant to do and they've been reluctant to preserve these historical narratives in order to foster this sense of patriotism. But perhaps this is the historian in me, I think that a full or as full as it can be understanding of history is more important than preserving this. Perhaps if a sense of patriotism cannot be found when these are taken into account, then we should find a new way of instilling pride in what our country has become that does not require ignorance of its past evils. I ultimately do not think it has to be the result, role of historical education to instill such pride at whatever level, but instead to give us the fullest sense of understanding we can get of both our country's history and that of the wider world. This leads me on to tackling the latter question. Is there now a need for a new worldwide approach to historical education? I would argue this is an absolute necessity in our increasingly globalised and diverse world in which people engaging in historical education in the years to come, including myself, will be thrown into. Historical syllabuses have, in my experience, often been very Eurocentric. This is in itself something that's beginning to be tackled as a result of modern political developments, including, as I have mentioned, the Black Lives Matter movement. In my personal experience, I've been exposed to little beyond European history, with most beyond that having been centred around issues such as the Cold War and the rise of communism in Asia and South America, still reflecting a more West-centric approach. In terms of my formal education, i.e. That, that, that I've experienced through my schooling and not engaged with myself, my experience of history outside of Europe has therefore been incredibly limited and restricted to certain contexts. I think that in previous decades, this has been used to reinforce worldviews centering on the superiority of the West over the rest of the world, and thus perhaps imperialist or colonial narratives on the focus of the world and on the idea of the superiority of certain races. With this in mind, and becoming increasingly critiqued in modern historical discourse, the focus of history needs to reflect a more globalized outlook, decentering from focus on the West and further on the typical powers of history these often associating as well with the West. If we understand history as a narrative reflecting the constructions of power, which is an idea that I believe in quite passionately, then a way to challenge these constructions and to tackle colonial narratives is to allow our history to have a more global outlook. Teaching the history, for example, of pre-colonial Africa, of, indig of indigenous communities in the Americas and in Oceania, and in more communities that have been left out of this Eurocentric history will better prepare people for understanding the modern world. If we're unable to understand history beyond our current worldview, then we must expand our horizons through wider historical education. I would perhaps, in the British context, even tend to suggest, even tend to suggest that it should be compulsory for at least one non-European unit to be taken on history GCSE courses, for example, in order to facilitate this understanding. I think therefore that historical education must ultimately adapt to suiting 
to suit these evolving modern circumstances. This includes these two questions I've sought to focus on here, the idea of widening history as a whole beyond simply using it to enforce patriotism, and to widen it in the sense of using history to allow us to understand our increasingly globalised world. In order to fit the changing world in which we live, historical education has to adapt as a means of allowing us to form this worldview, and I believe this rebuild should be largely along the lines I've outlined here. Historical education, as I believe it, should not should allow us to form a more open-minded and outward-looking worldview, not reinforce existing prejudices and act as its own form of propaganda. If we want history to work towards greater objectivity, we should seek to encourage this at all levels through historical education. So thank you so much for listening to my piece and for what I've had to say today on my views on the future of historical education. Um, I hope you really enjoyed listening to what I've had to say and be sure to check out the other videos that Path Forward have produced on various historical topics. Thank you very much.